Campers and outdoorsmen of Reddit, what's the scariest thing that has happened to you in the wilderness? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. Two years ago, I went to go visit family up in northern Minnesota around Labor Day weekend. I will not give the exact location, but will provide at least a general location where this happened. To keep this short, I'm hoping someone may have had a similar experience, or may have a general idea what this thing or entity was walking around our tent. General Location, Mary Brown Bridge, Monaga, Minnesota. On that Labor Day weekend, my girlfriend and I were planning on spending time camping with her family. Both of us were very excited to get away from the everyday city life, and anticipated a much needed low-key weekend. We arrived at their location around noon on Saturday, and were warm greeting by everyone there. During the day and evening, we were enjoying ourselves with random fun activities and catching up on how everyone was doing. As dusk started to settle in, we all were near the campfire for a few hours until 11 p.m. Eventually the family and ourselves called it a night, and headed to bed. My girlfriend and I were offered to sleep in a bigger-sized six-person earlier that day from whom her relative who I will call Mary. It was a kind gesture at the time, as we only brought a two-person-sized tent. Having that additional space for our belongings and our air mattress, was a nice added feature. Mary's tent was positioned not too far from the campfire and the rest of family. The family did a wonderful job clearing and maintaining the area for their smaller RVs and additional tents. To the back of the tent about 20 to 30 yards, is where the woods started with semi-thick brush and trees. Us three were laying down chatting, and eventually they both fell asleep. For some reason, I couldn't sleep, so I was on my phone passing time hoping to eventually drift off to sleep. This is when I heard faint activity in the woods about 40 yards back. I dismissed right away, as deer are known in this area, and continued to space off on my phone looking at random things. About 10 or 20 minutes later, I heard thing get closer to our tent. I could distinctly hear twigs snapping and moving between bushes getting closer to our tent or clearing. This started to get my attention, as I could start physically feeling a faint shake in the ground as this thing or entity was wandering around. Moments later, this thing was about 10 yards away from our tent walking or running back and forth. Each step this thing took, I could physically feel the vibration from the ground. This thing was big, best way to describe this feeling is if you went to live rock concert and felt the kick drum hit your body. At this point, I was a bit terrified as I was trying to follow the footsteps running or walking at the back and the side of the tent. This entity or thing got at least 5 yards near our tent, and suddenly stopped near Mary's side of the tent. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, scared of what this thing was going to do next. I kid you not, a few seconds later Mary shot up from being dead asleep. She gasped for air and was calling our names to wake us up, you could hear in her voice she was terrified. This entity hightailed off back in the woods, both of us were very startled at this point. The woods were dead silent, and eventually had enough courage to look out the tent. We saw and heard nothing, and about 30 minutes later ran to their shop to grab a shotgun. Another anomaly during this whole thing while we were alert and awake. Mary mentioned during this time I was awake, she was having a dream. She mentioned these entities were tormenting her saying they want her soul and to give it to them. My girlfriend dismissed the whole thing, and said it was probably just a deer etc running around. After hearing my girlfriend say that, I never told anyone about this story. Until recently, as I started to think about it again trying to figure out what the hell this thing or entity was. Three years ago, I reserved a hike in only campground in Marin Headlands north of San Francisco. It took about an hour and a half to walk up there. It was very beautiful but very desolate. It was just me, I got up there before nightfall and pitched my little tent. There were no other campers there. I enjoyed the beautiful sunset and went to bed. Sometime during the night, I woke up because I heard a noise coming from the trees about 10 yards behind the campsite. It sounded like a larger animal walking through underbrush very slowly, occasionally stopping. I tried to stay calm, but quickly realized that whatever it was was approaching my tent. Then, a few feet away, the footsteps stopped completely. After a few more moments, I heard a noise right outside my tent that I will never forget. It was a very low but very distinctly sad mournful sound. It sounded exactly like a quiet human moan. I was instantly totally paralyzed with terror. I did not move and I barely even breathed, 
let alone ask who was there. I knew I had no cell phone service up there and I would not have moved a muscle to pick up my phone even if I did have service. I'm not religious, but I did pray for whatever it was to leave me alone. I don't know how much time passed before it left, but it did. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. I remained motionless in my tent until the first bit of light and then quickly packed my stuff and ran back down to the parking lot, got in my car, and drove back to the city. I have not camped alone since then. My husband and I spent the night way out in the northern woods near a lake. There is a looped camping trail where you can rent a site out a few days for a relatively cheap price. Each site is probably separated by 70 to 80 meters, so while you can somewhat see and hear your fellow campers, it's never enough to take away from the ambience. Once we've set up our tent and gotten our belongings in order, we decided to get a fire going and have our usual go-to outdoors dinner of roasted hot dogs. The night was beautiful, the fire gave off the perfect amount of heat and didn't smoke in our faces at all, and for the most part our neighbors didn't get too boisterous. By quiet hours, we bedded down and got in our tent to spend some time enjoying the serenity and peace, until I realized for some reason our tent is sweating from the inside. And then it started raining hard. We take our valuables to the car immediately and get inside to wait out the weather before disassembling the tent. Our nearby neighbors all realize the weather situation as well, and we see them pack up and ship out one by one. This leaves us very much alone. This is where it gets insanely strange, and to this day, neither of us are quite sure what we experienced. Out in the distance beyond our sight, I see what appears to be a red light, maybe attached to a lantern. However, the way this light moves is completely inorganic. It doesn't sway or bob as if being held by a human who is walking around, rather, it snakes around in a perfect track and slowly comes closer and closer to our car. By this time, we've killed the headlights and are just staring at this spectacle with a mixture of awe and horror. My husband gets out of the car at some point and calls out in the rain if anybody is there. Lo and behold, the light disappears. This left a most bewildering and eerie feeling deep in my gut. Something did not feel right at all, sixth sense tingling and everything. At my urging, he gets back in the car and it doesn't take long for the light to reappear. By this point, I'm ready to leave, tent be damned. But my husband insists if we're to leave, we have to pack up our tent because he doesn't want it stolen. So, I begrudgingly oblige and while he stands watch with a flashlight, I get to work packing us up. I probably got it done in 5 minutes, maybe less. The entire time we were out there, we didn't see the red light. If we had, God, I don't know how I would have reacted, but I'm glad we were able to get our stuff and finally leave. My fiancé and I hiked into some forest in Ontario. We had a friend drop us off at the side of an old logging road in the middle of nowhere, and we hiked into the woods due east. The road ran north and south, so basically all we had to do was was stay due east hiking in. And due west hiking out, and we would reach the road again for our rendezvous at a predetermined time a couple of days later. There are no natural predators this far south such as bears or wolves, so for protection I only brought a K-bar knife and some bear spray, in case coyotes took an interest in our two dogs that accompanied us. The logging road was no longer in use by any industry, and we had hiked into the woods a few kilometers, so the chances of running into another human were nil. In addition, hunting is not permitted in the area, and there is no water nearby for fishing. There really wasn't any reason for anyone else to be out there in the middle of the woods that far off the road. No cell service, although I did bring a flare gun and multiple flares in case we ran into trouble to signal for help. No GPS, just a compass. We were careful hiking in, and didn't do anything risky to avoid injuries in this remote place. It was early fall, but it was unseasonably cold, well, below freezing. Lots of leaves on the ground and still on the trees, but no snow yet. We set up camp in some thick woods. You could barely see 50 feet away the trees or bushes were so dense. We were totally isolated and felt completely safe. It was so cold and so dark at night, it was moonless and cloudy, that we went to bed early to stay warm. I'm a heavy sleeper and next thing I know, I'm awakened by my dog pawing at my face. It is pitch black, and I can't even see him. I go to pet him, but something is wrong. As I touched him, I could feel his fur standing straight up, and he was completely rigid, facing the door of the tent. He was clearly on guard and very alert. At first, I assumed there was a woodland creature nearby, 
but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. That is unusual, because I often camp alone no problem, and am not easy spooked. My dog and I just stayed there frozen and alert, for at least a couple of minutes. My fiancé and other dog were still asleep next to us. It was 3.30 am, I checked my phone after the incident. The fire was out, no moon, complete blackness. Just as I was letting my guard down, I hear the most unexpected thing, a notification going off on a phone just outside of our tent, maybe 15 to 20 feet away and I see a faint glow. I hear a male voice mutter oh dang, or something to that effect, and hear them running through the leaves away from our tent. They were clearly smacking into tree branches etc, and swearing as they did so. At this point, they turn on their flashlight as they run, and I can see the beam flailing wildly around in the woods, occasionally back onto our tent. The dogs start going ballistic, I grab my knife and look at my phone, it's 3.30 am, I screamed out, if you come back here, I'll blow your head off. I'm assuming he had a satellite phone, or really good cell service to get a notification like that. The other weird thing was, he fled deeper into the woods and nothingness, not west towards the logging road. Needless to say, we packed up in the cold and hiked back to the road, watching our backs the entire time. We just walked down the road towards far off civilization until we ran into some other campers set up right next to the road 7 or 8 kilometers away from where we came out of the woods, it was just after first light. They let us use their satellite phone, and we called our friend to come pick us up a day early. Upon hearing our story, the campers decided they would pack up as well and get out of the area. Lesson learned, I do not camp in the wilderness anymore without a satellite phone and a 12 gauge. A friend and I got caught in a gnarly, sudden summer thunderstorm. Rain was forecasted, but not a goddamn monsoon. I woke up to the wind ripping the rain cover off the tent, and immediately getting soaked by freezing water. We took on heavy water almost immediately and had to pack what we could and ran to the truck. We ended up ripping the site down, shoving it under the tunnel cover and getting out of there as soon as it let up. The craziest part, one year later, exact same campground. We got hit by another storm, the exact same scenario. Forecast showed rained but a cold front and warm front hit right over this small town. This time was so much worse though. A tornado touched down about 150 yards away. I thought we were legitimately going to die that night. The tent stakes got pulled out of the ground and we got tossed around. Thank God we got flung into a wooden fence. I mean, it sucked but gave us enough time to get orientated and out of the tent. That feeling of flying through the air in a tent made me think of the Wizard of Oz. I couldn't help but laugh in that moment actually. I went booking it to the campground showers, but my dumbass stopped and I went and checked tents and trailers. We rounded up a dozen or so people and got everyone huddled into this shower structure. That was probably one of the most intense nights of my life as the storm lasted for about an hour or two after that and rain kept up longer. That freaking storm killed two people in a house about a stone's throw from our campsite. There were trees down everywhere, and all that remained at our site was the metal fire ring that was half buried. Two trailers got crushed and a family lost their vehicle to a tree. I have no idea how my car was unscathed. Forest Service and local PD and FD had to clear roads and trees before anyone could skip town. I'm not even mad that I lost all my camping gear that night. I'm never camping a day in my goddamn life again. A few years ago, I loaded a bunch of camping gear onto my bicycle and spent the better part of the next 7 months riding 5,300 miles around the western US, I did this trip solo. At night, I most often preferred to wild camp, simply finding somewhere to disappear into the woods, somewhere people were unlikely to find me and even less likely to care that I was there. The forest makes for far from a quiet night's sleep. But after the first couple weeks, I had grown used to and even found comfort in the sounds of the woods. The constant droning of thousands of crickets and toads was a certainty. It was always a highlight of my nights, though not particularly uncommon, to hear the yips and howls of a distant pack of coyotes. I fondly recall one night, I set up camp right between two owls, who hooted back and forth through much of the night. If nothing else, it wouldn't require much of a breeze to stir music from the tree canopy. About a month and a half into this trip, I set up camp one evening in the remote mountains of western Montana. After turning out my light and laying down in bed, I came to a disturbing realization. It was dead silent. There was not a single cricket chirping, no coyotes howling. 
There wasn't the babbling of a nearby creek, nor even the slightest wind to rustle the dry leaves of early autumn still clinging to the trees. It was truly silent, and that was terrifying. Suddenly the occasional snapping of a twig, a common sound normally lost in the cacophony of the woods, rang out like a gunshot. I can only describe it as the loudest silence I've ever heard, and it almost felt like the entire forest was hiding from an equally silent predator. I slept terribly that night, and I'll never forget the immense relief I felt when I heard the first bird song of the pre-dawn hour. I was parked up in a very rural car park in my camper van, all lights off, inside and obviously outside too, and about to get into bed. Realize I've left my charger cable in the front so open curtains to reach into the front to get it. It's like totally pitch black and we're 100% the only ones in the car park. I'm getting the cable then something catches my eye just on the edge of my peripheral vision. I look up, can't see anything, think it must be a reflection on the screen and carry on trying to get the cable. Again, something moves, again nothing there when I look up. I don't like it, so now I'm half looking up while trying to find the cable, then I see two tiny dots maybe 30 feet away, they blink, move then disappear. Cool, it's a fox or something. I get the cable and I'm about to go into the back then I see it move again. This time maybe 12 to 15 feet away and this time it's higher up, about head height to me, and I'm standing up in a sprinter van. This time around the eyes I can see the faint reflection of a face but with dark holes where the eyes and mouth should be, maybe the outline of like a nightgown and then it disappears again. I'm alone and a grown ass man, but I had the coldest shiver run right through me and totally peed myself. I grabbed the keys, double checked doors were all locked then scrambled over the seats into the front, started the van in about half a second and just backed out and noped the absolute hell out of there. Worst thing is, in a van, there's no rear view mirror and it was about half a mile back onto the road. I was getting cold shivers through me all the way back to the road and into the nearest town, about 15 minutes drive through roads with forest all around me most of the way. I'm sure I imagined half of it after the event and years later it feels like the whole thing was exaggerated and BS. Maybe I imagined the whole thing, but I've never been so close to tears from fear in my life before or since. To this day, I make sure I've got my charger cable before I get in the back of the van. Anyways, I used to hang out in this one particular spot in the woods near my house. It was next to a little creek and the branches of the trees dipped way down, like a canopy, overall it felt very safe. This was pre-COVID, maybe 4 to 5 years ago. One time, I was hanging out as usual, getting ready to pack up my stuff and head out because it was getting close to the time my family would be home. I'm not allowed out of the house on my own, so I usually sneak out when they leave if I want to go to the woods. I'd recently got a camcorder and was taking a video just showing off my happy place. As I'm starting to head back up the hill towards home, I look up and see a pristine white pelvic bone hanging from the branch of a tree. It scared the hell out of me. I know some animals will put their prey in trees, but this was a flimsy tree that probably couldn't hold something climbing it and the bone was picked clean. Maybe birds cleaned it. Looked big enough to have been from a deer. I had just been in the woods the day before too, and it wasn't there previously, I live in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure what animal could have done this. There's probably a logical explanation, but in that moment I took it as someone or something telling me, get out, this is my territory. So yeah, safe to say, I picked a new spot. Every time I returned to that location, I get this feeling like I'm being watched, which I guess is fair because I'm in the woods with animals and stuff. Decided to take a path down a bluff rather than hiking the long way down, following the ridgeline over and down, or making a big loop essentially to get down. We scoped it out beforehand and there was a very easy and straightforward looking route that went right down the front face. We were in New Mexico, so think big reddish rocks and scrub brush. We thought about it for a while before going for it, which really should have clued us in, I think our subconscious knew it was a bad idea. So it's probably a 100 feet or so bluff, not too big really. Small pond at the bottom, access road lazily looping around the other side of said pond, what we were trying to get to, and then a beautiful collection of pines on a small grassy hill across from that. Pleasant little valley and hill scene. Really a great view from up there, forever ingrained into my memory, and no complaints. Anyway, we start our route scrambling down and it's mainly just like navigating through a downhill boulder field. 
there were a few places that would be difficult to go the other direction on. Then we get about a quarter of the way down and an obstacle we couldn't see from up top confronts us. A chute between two rock faces with about a 7 foot drop and a small landing square at the bottom. Then the route turns abruptly. So it's basically a small ledge that you have to jump down to, and then turn around 90 degrees and continue on the route we saw from above. We just couldn't see this bit as it was hidden by rocks when viewed from above, but the ledge was a ledge. It was a full 75 foot or so drop right off the front of it, the direction you were forced to jump between the two faces. We paused for a minute, but we had already gone over some sections that we knew would be really painful to get back over, especially since we'd have to hand gear up and such. And after pausing and looking again, we decided it was a total straight shot down after just this one jump. So we decided I would go first, I was taller so easier to hand gear down too. I took off my pack and stood there looking down at my landing pad, easy I remember thinking. I took the jump and somehow got tripped up, I think my toe caught on a lip of rock? I really don't know what happened, but I do know that I pitched forward and barely landed my feet on the landing pad at all. I was falling forward off of a 75 foot cliff. Somehow, I managed to throw both of my arms out to the sides and I caught myself staring straight down at the little pond, access road, and pine trees, it really was a picturesque view. But I was more focused on the big rocks and flat, uninviting gravel patch in front of the pond at that point. I was leaned out so far that I couldn't leverage myself back up, so I was basically just leaning way out off this 75-foot cliff staring down at certain death in the form of some rocks and a tan gravel patch. Both arms all the way extended, and shaking from strain, and just staring down at death. My arms probably were about to give, and it had only really been seconds at that point. If even a second, time lost meaning, and then the person I was hiking with grabbed the collar of my shirt and pulled me back. Enough that I could engage my arms again and push back on the rock faces, getting back to standing upright on the ledge. Thank you Connor. The real messed up part is that then Connor had to jump down after watching how my jump went. I felt bad about that. Luckily, no issues. About 20 feet later, we found another obstacle we couldn't see from above and had to slide down a rock face that was more than a little sketchy, I think clothes got ripped if I remember right, but after that it was easy going. Moral of the story, don't hike straight down bluffs, even if you think you see an easy route. It's definitely easier and safer to just hike the gradual decline around the edge of it. Don't end up a dead laying in a patch of gravel at the bottom of a cliff, do the smart thing. Even if you think you can see the whole route, you likely can't, and that path down could kill you. Please be safe.